Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. Now, a wise woman once said, and I might be paraphrasing a little bit, if you like it, then you should have put a frame on it. And that's what we're going to do in this video. Now, it might seem a bit straightforward, and it really is, but if we want to run this as an action, then it starts getting a bit awkward. And we do want to run this as an action because it's one of these things we can do repetitively without having to worry ourselves. So let's take a look and see how we get on. I'm going to go over to the original image of Lighthouse. Here we go, Lighthouse Small. And I'm going to very, very quickly put a border on it. All I need to do is increase the canvas size. So I'm going to go to Image and Canvas Size. And here we go. I can add pixels. Now you might come in here and this is unchecked. And you see this. Now this is telling me the absolute size of my canvas. Now this is all very well, but I'm not going to sit here and do math and add pixels to these. So I'm going to do relative. And in that case, then I can add 30 pixels to the width and 30 pixels to the height. And I can click OK. It's anchored to the middle. So OK. And there is our border. I can add a new layer to the very bottom. I can fill that with black. And there we are. I've got a border all ready to go. It's a very simple border, but a border nonetheless. OK. I'm going to Control Alt Z back a few steps just so we get back to the beginning of this. OK, there's a few things we need to see as well now. Let's go and do the same on this Lighthouse Big. So if I then go up to Image and Canvas Size and again add 30 pixels to the width and 30 pixels to the height and click OK, a very, very thin border. Now that won't do at all. Let me just add a new layer at the bottom, fill it with black just so we get the comparison. OK, it's still a border of sorts, but it's very, very thin, not really what I'm after. And that's because of the resolution of the two images. Same image, different resolution. So this is the original, very high resolution image. OK, I'm going to control Alt Z back a few steps because I'm going to need that image again a little bit later. Let's go back to my original one, the small one. OK, so if we were running an action, then adding 30 pixels on the height and the width every time isn't going to do it because it depends on the resolution of our image. Well, that's easily solved. Let me show you something. If I go to Edit and Preferences and then up to Units and Rulers, you can see at the moment I'm using pixels, but we have a whole host of different measurements that we can use, including percent, which of course will be relative to the image. So that might be helpful to use. I'm going to leave it as pixels just for a second because I want to show you something else. If I can control R to bring up the rulers and right click on the rulers, you can see we get the same choices and I can change it from pixels to percentage just here as well. And that indeed is reflected down in the preferences as well. You can see it's down up there as percent and that's going to be Photoshop wide. So if I made a new guide, for example, the guide would come up as a percentage of the image rather than pixels. OK, Control R just to get rid of the rulers again. But we know now we're working in percentages. So now I can go to Image and Canvas Size and I can change this. Let's go for 15% and click OK. Now that hasn't worked very well at all because the top and the bottom is much thinner than the left and the right. Let me explain the logic here. 15% of that amount of pixels is more than 15% of that amount of pixels. So we have a problem. Could we use that in an action? No, because that's going to change every time as well. So we're going to control Z that. So how are we going to do this? Well, through trial and error, lots of error, I can tell you that if you go to image and the canvas size, and on the longest edge, we do 8%. And on the height, we do 10%. So on the longest edge, we do 8%. And on the shortest edge, we do 10%. And click OK. We get a reasonably square border. Now, you might think, OK, but that must depend on the image as well. But yep, it's, it's kind of close enough for the majority of the time. I'm not going to say it's going to work every time, because if you've got a big panorama, it's not going to 
not going to work at all but for the majority of the time that's going to work reasonably well let me show you on stones here um, this is a five by seven so if I then go image and canvas size and width again eight percent height ten percent we get a reasonable border there as well okay control alt z to take that back and control alt z to take these ones back as well so let's make that into an action so i've got my actions palette here if you haven't got your actions palette you can find it whoop, on the window uh, under actions or you can press f9 to bring it up here we go uh, i've already created one before let's get rid of that and create a new action and i'm going to call this simple landscape and press record the first thing i always like to do when i create an action is to come up to image and then duplicate and that's going to make a duplication of the image we're working in so i'm going to call this one frame landscape and i'm going to duplicate merged layers only so click on that now before i click ok i want you to see that i've got no locked layers in this there's no background layer that will become important in just a second and I click OK and sure enough up comes our new document and it's all flattened down all been squished into one and there's still no locked layer however I may want to run this on a background locked layer image in the future so I need to overcome that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the flyout menu and I'm going to flatten the image which will make a background image and then uh, it will lock it and then I can unlock it so no matter now what happens in the future if I use this on a locked layer it will be fine it will do the same thing and it will also keep the naming going as well so this will always be called layer zero okay cool let's go and uh, alter the canvas size so image canvas size and then I want to go width as 8 percent and height as 10 percent make sure relative is on click OK and sure enough there we go I'm going to press D to make sure that my colors my foreground and my background colors are at their default which they are if I create a new layer and drag that underneath and then I can fill that with black alt and backspace and sure enough there we go there it is there's my border back up to my actions and I can stop recording that let's just twirl that close to make things a bit easier okay I'm going to close that down go back to my original image and run my action and see how that goes sure enough there we go nice and easy we've got it we can always alter that of course change the color put a texture on it do whatever we like cool let's close that one down and let's try it on this much higher resolution image so let's go like that and sure enough there we go that's looking good close that one down and then lastly let's try it on this uh, 5 by 7 cropped and press play and away it goes now you'll notice that on the stones uh, we did have a background layer as well as all the others and when we get to the final image it's all squished down and we have that naming all the same as well okay cool now my original image that you saw at the beginning of this video looked like this all I've done there is I've set the action to increase the canvas size then add a stroke to it and then increase the canvas size and fill it again with black so I've actually got two black layers there there's one and there's the other one there's one there's the other one um, that one's got a stroke on it and that one hasn't just to give me a little white line around the outside and that's all there is to it so there we go if you like it then you should have put a frame on it and it's as easy as that and that's it all done i'm eric reno this was a video for tipsquirrel.com don't forget to tell your friends about the site there's a lot of great stuff there and of course it is all absolutely free i'll see you next time bye bye for now